Well, hello everybody again. <clears throat> this is Mr. Taylor. Let's talk about trend lines. So we've already did a little exploration uh, with scatter plots. And we're in unit six and uh, we're in now um, lesson 14.2, which talk about trend lines and prediction. So our first activity is to draw a trend line okay so let's move on to the second slide your learning objective is you would use a trend line to model relationships between the two variables and of course your key uh, vocabulary will be trend line according to the author when a scatter plot shows a linear association or a linear correlation, remember those are those use those two words interchangeable. It depends on what your uh, what your star will look like. So just remember that association and correlation means the same thing. You can use a line to model the relationship between the variables. A trend line is a straight line that comes closest to the points on a scatter plot. So that line you're going to use to make your predictions or uh, show the relationship, we call that line a trend line. Well, here we have Joyce, and she's training for a 10K race. For some of her training runs, she records the distance she ran and how many minutes she ran. So here they're asking us to make a scatter plot of Joyce running data. You might want to stop it here and see can you use this data and plot this data. Remember what the uh, distance is going to be your uh, x-axis and time is going to be your y-axis. Okay, the first thing we want to plot or the first pair we want to plot is 4 and 38. So you come over to 4 go up now let's look at our intervals this is 5 10 15 and so on this is one half one and so on so I want to come over to four and this is 35 so I want to go somewhere I don't make my dot not quite as big as it is up there now let's do here well we could it I guess we're not we're not gonna make it that big so we'll just put four and 38 comes about right there then the next says two and 25 so go over to 2 and come up here and that should be 25 and 1 and 7 so the first one is a half here's 1 this is 5 6 roughly 7 is probably there and then 2 again and 16 so this is 2 this is 10 15 and probably here and we have 3 and 26 so here's 3 that's 25 probably here and then we have 5 and 55 so we go all the way up to 50 55 right here we have 2 and 20 so 2 and go to 20 right there and we have 4 and 45 so 4 coming up to 45 which is about here and we have 3 and 31 3 and 31 probably here so we go here so these is what I see of the data she recorded for her runs okay let's see what else they're asking us to do so they says to draw a trend line and it asks us to use a straight edge to draw that line so of course your book is flat if you have a copy of the book but uh, if not just just draw you something on a on a, uh, a sheet of paper if you don't have uh, according to grid paper uh, just just draw it on a sheet of paper do you make your axes and, and uh, then do your plot your plots and use your straight edge and it tells us uh, to use make sure you draw where it's about the same amount of points on top and bottom of the line and it say ignore any any outliers 
and then use your trend line to predict, predict how long it will take Joyce to run 4.5 miles. Then it asks us to uh, reflect on how well does your trend line fit the data. Then it's explained. And do you think that you can use a scatter plot that show uh, no association to make a prediction and then ask us to explain? Okay, you can go ahead and stop it and see can you do that for me? All right. So here is the actual, and notice I, the, I well actually the book did its trend line from zero. We don't necessarily have to start from zero there. That's but that's what they decided. I don't know if I would have done. Let me let's go back if you don't mind, if you don't mind, and look at the way. Yes, yes, because if I would have if I would have done the exact same thing, and let's see, can I get my pointer to work? And I would have looked at my data and said, yeah, that seems about where I would want to start it. And, and I'm making sure that I pretty much determined where I am going equally with, with the data points equally distance between one and the other. Top and bottom, something, yeah. One, two, three, four, one, two, three. Yeah, something like that. So, of course, that's what I would have done. So, we'll see how close that the author got to this same thing. Pretty, pretty, pretty close. Okay, so this is what his drone trend line looked like from this data. And if we were to use. Um, the trend line to predict how long it would take her to run 4.5 miles. So if you would go 4.5, which is about here, and you would come up to your trend line and look, it's about right there. So that's that's the way we predict. Uh, just you go over to uh, the distance to time, and it says. Uh, the distance actually and it says 4.5 so we go over 4 that's 4.5 and we come up to the line and that's what we come at which is how we got 45 okay now how well does your trend line fit the data well it's close to the line if we go back and look it's close. Look at this. I mean, we, some of the things we actually ran through. So had, the line had to go through. So this is a strong correlation. It is closely associated. It is closely clustered to that line. It is a strong uh, uh, correlation, a strong association. We use the author's words. Do you think you can use a scatter plot that shows no association to make a prediction? And, and then we have to say no because that that scatter plot is not going to have uh, a downward or upward or whatever. It, you know, the points are going to be here, there, here, here, whatever. As a matter of fact, you know, points will be, I don't want to go ahead and take that off. Points will be like here, 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 like here. Like here, like here, like here. See, and there's no way you can determine whether that's upward trending or downward trending or whatever. So um, the answer for number two would be no. Okay, that does it for this. And as you, as you see, the trend line is not anything that's difficult. Uh, we will get into creating a formula for this, so you will see it's even more enlightening. This is Mr. Taylor, and if you haven't done so, and you like the uh, methodology of going through this new eighth grade math, go ahead and subscribe.